make you all aware uh, I can see we have a good chunk of either brood lords here or uh, legionnaires at that uh, so for those of you that are not aware everyone we in SKL currently have a system uh, that's just officially launched today that's called the officers academy and tonight's training is going to be the first official training session of the officers academy and our idea here is to provide you guys with regular training sessions that are going to be short and are going to tackle practical points of leadership in planet side 2 just to teach you guys how to do a better job at leading our platoons I'll in get the you field fixed up. The final objective here is that SKL should have leaders 24-7 uh, just out there doing decent leadership for VS and giving us wins and just making the game more enjoyable for the general community and the Medicare. new players that join the game as well. You guys, when you are leading the platoons, you are the first line for the new players that joins the game. So that's why we want to train you guys and give you the tools necessary uh, to be out there. There you go, Nitro. I'll get you fixed up. Okay, so for tonight, everyone, uh, tonight's lessons will be on map reading, map strategy, maneuvering around the map, and uh, just overall how to do strategy in Planet Side Two. Right. So I'm gonna start by giving you guys a few tips around the map, some things that you guys should always keep in mind. Then I'm gonna proceed to talk about double teams, uh, how you're gonna avoid double teams and how you're gonna create them when you need uh, it to happen. And uh, more towards the end we're gonna talk about cutoffs and alerts and how you should react uh, during an alert. Right. So for tonight I will ask you guys to stay on the map screen. So everyone, you're all going to open up your maps. Uh, we're going to go to Esamir first. Uh, there's an alert going on on Esamir. And as you're all probably aware, uh, the job of a platoon leader consists mostly of reading the map. Uh, as someone who's leading our forces into the battle, you're not expected to be a heavy assault taking a point. You're not expected to be a medic reviving people on point. You're expected to be the mind of the Zerg and you're expected to guide the players that are playing the FPS game towards a positive outcome in the map screen. That's the end job of the platoon leader. You guys are literally the mind of the Zergs that are homing around the map. That's what an SKL platoon leader is. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to touch on tonight is uh, key facilities, so fortress bases. Uh, I'm going to start basic to some of you guys, you might already know some of these, uh, but I'm sure some people are not completely aware of them and we need to go over them anyway. So if you look at a map, in, in any of the maps, uh, you can see that each facility uh, on the continents, they have an icon on top of the name. So I'm going to guide you guys right now to Vider observation site that's close to the shattered warp gate uh, on the NC territory right there. That icon on top of the name Vider observation site means that that base is a vehicle capture base. It it does not have a hard spawn. I I think that one actually has a hard. Spawn. It is a special one, but those bases are basically bases that you can capture with a vehicle. Now, if you go to the Excuse base, me, what do you mean by hard spawns? Uh, hard spawn is basically the, the spawn on the base itself, right? It, it means that you have a spawn uh, option on that base. Uh, most of those bases that are just like that, so I'll give you another example. If you go to Endar, uh, if you go to Endar right now, all of you know Quartz Ridge, right? If you go to Quartz Ridge, the base directly north of Quartz Ridge is Lowland Trading Post. You see the same icon right there. That base right there does not have a spawn option in it. Uh, if the enemies come to capture that base, for you to defend it, you need to either have a player base, a player made base in there with uh, an Elysian tube or a deployed Sunder or a router, or you need to pull vehicles from the base before and push to defend that base. That base does not have a spawn, a uh, hard spawn on it. Uh, that basically is what that icon means. It's a vehicle 
vehicle capture base. Uh, the tanks are just going to drive in and they can capture the points without infantry fights. It's a vehicle fight base. Uh, so going back to Azimir, uh, find vital uh, acquisition question. site. Yeah, go ahead. Does that mean that uh, technically Maxes can also capture those points? Yeah, it, you know, infantry and Max, no, no, not Maxes. Infantry can still capture it. Maxes can't capture points. I, I believe not. I might be wrong on that one, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't Maxis, think so. Yeah, Maxis can't flip any kind of points. Uh, inside a vehicle, you still can, but I don't think Maxis counts towards that. Actually, that's a good one for us to try out after this. I'm going to go ahead and try that out myself. But yeah, those bases basically means you can capture that with vehicles. Now, uh, back to vital observation site. Uh, if you look to the left of that base, you're going to see a normal base. That's just a normal facility. The rink right there, you can see the rink, has a small icon to it. Uh, it's basically like a, a horseshoe or... You know, it's half a C upside down, you call it whatever you want. Uh, but then I want you to see the difference between that base right there and the, the base directly to the right of Vidar called Grey Heron Shipping. You guys can see the difference on the icons right there, right? The, the rink is a small C upside down and Grey Heron is like a, a bigger kind of structure with two columns and a roof on top of it, right? So basically what that means is that that base right there is a stronghold base and it is a three-point capture base. That base right there has three points for you to capture, might even be more uh, depending on the base. Uh, and you can see others just like that one. You can see Sierra Listening Post. Uh, you can see Matterson's Triumph. Down south, you can see Watterson's Redemption. You can pinpoint those fortress bases throughout the map. And uh, when you are playing during an alert, those bases are what you guys want to keep. Uh, that's high priority on all maps, right? So if we switch maps over to Emmerich, now everyone, let's go over to Emmerich. Uh, we're looking at the VS warp gate right now, and we can see that on the middle lattice uh, going to the ascent, we have Crux headquarters. That's another example right there. Then in the center, we have the Bastion, and those are all key bases that, uh, as a general rule of thumb, are extremely difficult to take. Uh, these bases are the choke points where you can stop uh, a larger army than the, the one fielded by your own faction from advancing uh, and they're extremely hard to take if you're an attacker uh, so you are all gonna need to learn uh, each basis on all the different continents uh, and uh, learn how to capture each one of them and we're gonna go over specific bases on another weekend of training uh, but the general rule of thumb is, if you are attacking one of those bases, you will want to uh, surf the Zerg to capture that base. So what I want to see from you guys is, let's say we're attacking uh, Crux headquarters on Emrish, uh, as you all can see there, and we are at 50-50, right? We're at a standstill. Currently, we're fighting for control of points and we're not making any progress. If you have a platoon available to send it to that base and skyrocket the population to 96 plus, you will 100% want to do that. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no excuse to be made about overpopping a fortress base to capture it. No one is going to call you a Zerg. That's just securing a key base for your faction. That's just how you should do it 100% of the time. So if you have the opportunity to dump a large amount of population into a fortress base like Crux Headquarters, The Bastion, Quartz Ridge on Indar, uh, Hauling Pass on Indar, you should always do it 100% of the time. Because holding on to those bases will give you enough room to maneuver with your population. You can send your population back to defend it and get a few minutes squeeze a few minutes out of an alert if you need it. Uh, you can defend it very easily under popped. Uh, and if you are defending those bases, uh, 
if you are looking at your map and you see that one of those fortress bases on your faction is being attacked, that should be your priority number one to not lose those bases. You can leave it alone if it's a standstill, but if you see that there's a huge Zerg hitting a base like that, and you are going to lose it if you don't send your platoon there, you should always try to keep those bases up. Those are key points. They're first priority when going, uh, when choosing where, where to send your platoon uh, in a map. Now, uh, second to that, and uh, this is also a rule of thumb for every single continent in the map, is uh, generally when you are playing in alert, you will want to always keep your platoon away from the center of the map. Uh, this does not hold for every single situation. It's a general rule. You guys will need to break it from time to time just to get those final percentages to win an alert. But as a general rule of thumb, you want to avoid the central bases because if you are capturing a lot of territory in the center of the map, you are basically cutting off lattices between your enemies. I'm going to give you guys a few examples right now. Let's go to Amorish once again. Everyone look at the center of the map on Amorish, right? So let's say we are VS on Amorish. There's an alert going on in the continent and you guys need to choose where to go. You have three options right now. You can either fight TR on East Shore, so on the west, uh, on the Eastern Front, you can fight NC on the north side of the map, on North Grove, or you can go for the center of the map. If you decide to go for the center basis on Amorish, what you're going to end up doing is, if you capture Lift Corp Central, you're going to cut off one more territory that's connected between the other two factions. So if you capture one of those two center bases right there, you are denying the enemies from fighting each other. That means they're going to fight you. That's exactly how you create a double team. So if you can, uh, especially in the beginning of an alert, try to keep your platoon away from the center of the map and focus on the bases on the sides. If you go to all of the other continents, you're going to start seeing that every continent has key bases on the sides that you should always try to play for. So we're going to go back to Endar this time. I want you all to go to Endar because this one is the best example that we can have. Uh, you, if you take a look at the northern warp gate, uh, on the sides there, on the northern warp gate, you have both hauling pass on the east and you have Indar excavation on the west. Those two bases are the two fortress bases that you should always try to fight for and defend when you are on the northern warp gate. And I'm giving you guys one quick example of a specific warp gate, but you can picture the same thing for the other ones as well. And if you are on both of those uh, on both of those bases, you can push to the following uh, fortress that's like the next objective following that lattice. If you are on Indar Excavation, it should be Quartridge, so you can see that there is a fortress base directly to the south of it, and that's where you should keep the attrition. And on the east side, same thing from hauling pass you can push to the fortress that's crimson bluff tower and that's where you should keep the attrition on the sides between the fortress bases fighting for them at all times and you keep your population there that rule of thumb should give you enough room to breathe on the center of the map to make a play in the end of an alert if you need an, an, another piece of territory to get the final percentages that you need uh, you can dip one of those bases because of it being a fortress base. It can withstand against higher populations. And you can take a platoon somewhere else to capture a one-point base, a four-minute cap, and go over that percentage uh, to win an alert. So always try to avoid the center, go for the sides as a general rule of thumb, unless it's a very specific situation, right? Uh, now, another general rule... And this is, you know, one of the rule number ones of platoon leading is you should never, never, under any circumstance, take your platoon to a bio lab. Uh, that is, if you are playing for an alert, right? We are talking about a strategic point of view here. Uh, 
uh, each one of you are going to be are, are going to have a different style of platoon leading and if you guys are leading a platoon at 5 a.m. in the morning and everyone is just looking for a farm and you just want to get into a good fight and farm I'm not going to you know bash you guys for taking your platoon into a bio lab it's totally fine you guys are just there for having fun but if you are playing to win if you are looking at it uh, with a strategic view you should always avoid biolabs. There are always population sinks. Your population will be stuck in there fighting uh, in in just a fight that's not going to go anywhere because biolabs are made to just keep the fights stuck in there. They're terrible for the battle flow. And in every single situation around the map, uh, if you guys go back to Endar right now uh, or any other map at that, I ask that you find any biolab in any continent and look at the bases around it and you will realize that every single biolab can be cut off without you actually needing to capture the biolab. So if you need to capture a biolab for any reason, if you need to cut off a fight that uh, if your side has a lot of population in a biolab and you want to free up that population to go fight somewhere else, you should work to cut off the biolab around it instead of going into the biolab fight yourself because you're just going to get stuck there. Every biolab in every continent can be cut off by going to the bases around it and capturing them instead. Right? Uh, so, let me see if I have anything else on the normal bases around the maps. Yeah, I think those are all the points on the facilities. Uh, now I'm I'm gonna make uh, five to ten minutes here for questions about these specific points and about the facilities themselves on all the maps. So if anyone has any questions about any of the continents, any of the bases on the continents, any specific kind of facility, this is the time. And then we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna move on to double teams, how to avoid them, how to deal with them, that kind of stuff. So any questions? No. No, it's clear cut to me. Um, I would like to say that Orby, you sir, are an amazing person. You helped us you helped me on Friday, you helped everybody, and you should be given like free beer and, and cookies for life. Hey shorty. Brown nose. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, definitely serious question. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, what is with amp stations? Okay, so AMP stations, uh, they're a little different from biolabs. Uh, different continents will have different layouts for uh, AMP stations. So you basically have two different basic types that you will come across. One of them is the single point AMP station. That's the point inside of the facility itself, inside of the shields. And those can be pretty easy to capture if you have a well-coordinated platoon. All you need to do is pull a bunch of sunders with uh, gate shield diffusing and you get your platoon inside with a router and sit on the point. If you manage to do that you should be able to capture an amp station no problem. It's far easier to do than capturing a biolab so you don't need to worry too much about capturing an amp station. Uh, however if it is one of those one points amp stations and you cannot get your platoon inside with GSLD Sunders and you need to wait for the shields and you're just you know wasting time waiting for the shields to go down for you to then get inside the points you're better off just peeling off the amp station. Now there are other amp stations in the game Amrish is a good example of that if you go to Amrish right, right now Sungri amp station on our territory is a three-point amp station and these kinds of amp stations every time you hold uh, you have control of a point in those amp stations your faction will get a hard spawn on that base that means your faction will get a spawn room on that base just by having control of a spawn point and those those amp stations are just like any other base you just go to the points you hold on to the points there's no secret to it uh, but yeah, amp stations overall should not be as big a headache as the biolabs. So you shouldn't need to worry too much about it. 
if you are interested specifically on how to capture the single point amp stations, the one that I just mentioned, because it is because it is like a very specific maneuver that you have to do in order to you know get inside with your entire platoon. It requires a lot of coordination. We will go over that specific strategy on the uh, what is it? I, I think it might be the second or the third weekend of the month uh, where we will go over uh, battle maneuvers. So I'm going to talk more about that in another training session specifically on how to take the amp station. Uh, but for today, we're just talking map strategy. Amp stations are good to go. You should be completely fine to just tackle an amp station and take it with your platoon, no problem. Okay. Any other questions? Any is there other anything about facilities? Is there anything special about tech plants that we should know about? Yeah, so as tech plants are really uh, like there's no secret at all to them. Uh, once again, I will go over each of these special facilities and how to take them specifically uh, in a practical sense. Like I'm going to take you guys to the base and show you guys like here's where you put the router. Here's what is where you go in with the sunder. In a different weekend, tonight is more about training, uh, map strategy, and just maneuvering around the map. Uh, but tech plants overall, you should just get to the point and keep your platoon in the balcony. If you guys go to the to any tech plant, you will see that there is uh, on one of the sides of the of the tech plant there is a higher up balcony that you can fire onto the A point from that balcony. So if you get inside with your platoon, drop from a galaxy, or get a router in or just get people through the doors and keep your platoon on the balconies, you should be able to capture any tech plant, no problem. It's also a very easy base to capture uh, if you have a coordinated platoon. So uh, it, nowhere near as problematic as a biolab. So do not be afraid to tackle a tech plant. Just make sure you're telling your platoon to constantly stay on the balcony. Guys, stay on the balcony, watch the points, stay on the balcony, watch the points, and you should be fine. Or basically do what I do, just yell at them and they all stay in one place. Exactly, yep. So anyone, any more questions about this topic before we move on to double teams? Let's, what's hidden at Vanu Archives, huh? What are you hiding from us? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's where VS hides all the anime, bro. All <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, the anime. Okay, no more questions, anyone? Final chance? They're typing in between chat as well, versus voice. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Just a second, I was on, yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah, this, this is a lot of messages. Guys, uh, while the capture time's not in mouse over on the map, uh, are the times to capture the base the same for a given type of base? Yes, so iteration, uh, so every base uh, that's similar uh, should have equal times to cap the base one is four minutes for any one point base uh, if you are talking about a fortress base or one of the big bases it should be a six minute capture time uh, but the problem is if you're talking about a bigger base uh, with more points you are most likely never going to be able to hold all three points at all times so you can look, uh, sometimes you can have base timers that go up to like 12 minutes, 14 minutes of capture time, depending on the base you're tackling. Uh, so yeah, simple bases should be four minutes. Big bases should be six. There are a few uh, that are bigger or shorter than that. Uh, but the problem with the bigger ones is you are most likely never going to be able to hold on to all three points throughout the capture time. So that timer is going to stretch itself to, you know, upwards of 20 minutes uh, for you to capture something like Quartz Ridge. Uh, let me see any more. What does the influence cloud on the map do? Okay, so yeah, that's, that's actually a very good point right there. So everyone, go back to your maps, everyone. And uh, now this is something that should be taught, like, on the just on the basic training that you get when you first create a character. So if you go to the top left side of your screen, where right now you guys should be able to see statistics, 
you should all go through every single one of those things including the filters including the search feature and just mess with that as much as you guys can to get a good understanding of how everything works because this is the information you guys are going to be working with uh, every time you're playing platoon league right so on these statistics you guys can see as the mere population like the specific continent you are in uh, the population of that continent and one of the important ones here is territory control and this is a very useful tip guys every time you want to see the percentage control on a continent go to that statistics tab and change it to territory control because most of the times and this is just another feature of planetside when you pressure uh, when you press tab during an alert to just show you the like the bar on the center right there that tells you how much of the continent you you are currently holding most of the times that's going to be bugged it happens all the time like that percentage and the percentage on the top of the map to just be bugged and tell you a different number and uh, not only that but also sometimes uh the percentage that shows on top of the map will not round the the actual percentages right so you might see on the on the bar there on the map 33 percent 33 percent 33 percent and then when you go to that tab on the statistics you actually see that one of the factions has like 34 percent instead of 33 so that is a better way for you to get a hold of the territory control instead of just relying on the center bar that's going to be there during an alert because that bar most of the times will be bugged like it bugs all the time it happens all the time so always keep an eye on that for territory control if you go down to filters you can just mess with the map whatever you want to show the influence clouds on the map uh, if you press that that's a feature that's basically a dinosaur from an age pass uh, it basically doesn't work anymore to do what it means to do but it should highlight your map with a higher density color uh, depending on the population that you hold on a certain base so a base with more population should be a brighter shade of purple or a brighter shade of blue but it doesn't serve a purpose that it should so I highly encourage you guys to just don't have the influence cloud on it just makes the map like messier than it needs to be you can use the grid if you want I personally don't use it that much I just use the names of the apps themselves uh, and if you go down you can change like the legend so you you can see the different uh, kinds of facilities that you have small outposts large outposts the things that I just talked to you guys about the icons on top of the names and then there's the search feature search feature guys one of the best things in planet side 2 that no one knows about every time i say the name of a base or someone calls out a base you can type in the name of the base that you're looking for and it's going to show you that base on the map that's just brilliant right there and no one knows about it now the tactical overlays that you can do there is basically a tool for you to draw on top of the map you can use it to draw lines if you are making an armor push uh, you can use it to mark enemy targets uh, but it's not that used I highly encourage you to use smokes if you want to target something else uh, or just use your waypoints it's a lot easier to use and it's a lot easier to see and that feature is also a little bit buggy you can mess around with it if you guys want but I would highly encourage you to also stay away from it uh, because it's not that reliable uh, or can I say something, Mitt? Go ahead, go ahead. Right, so in the in the case of the uh, pulling a bastion and we are doing like an actual strike, like we're doing a straight run through the bastion, the one thing that I have learned is that smokes give away position for the enemy that they might actually see the smoke and kind of take that target out of play. Whereas if you use your waypoints, it seems more tactically advantage to us especially if you're not streaming but you know what I'm talking about yeah make sure your faction smoke so I am VS if I drop a smoke in an enemy Sunder they can't see that smoke you can only see your own faction smoke 
So it, oh, it sounds. I didn't know it that. Sounds yeah. It sounds like you're giving away your like your targets, but they can't see the smoke. Only your own faction can see the smoke. Uh, if it wasn't for that, we could just spam smoke in on in front of a spawn room and just basically block their views. So it it would be yeah, a weapon sorry. instead of so what? I so I yeah so that's what I was thinking. And yeah, they, they can't see it. They can't see it. They can see smoke from different things. Like if you drop, if you are aiming at something with uh, a flail, for example, and you shoot the flail gun, like with the, the dart that's going to target the flail shot, that's going to give out smoke and the enemies can see that because they can shoot the dart and stop the flail from firing. But the normal smoke that you drop on the map from... Uh, the platoon leader and squad leader perspective, the enemies can't see that. Don't, don't need to worry about giving away your targets. They can't see it. Sounds good? 10-4. Okay, everyone, any more questions about any of this before I move forward? I'll get you fixed up. Sounds good. No more questions. Okay, everyone, next topic. Uh, double teams. How to deal with them uh, how to stop a Zerg, how to just, you know, stop yourself from getting beaten to death in the map screen. So, the first lesson will be how not to create a Zerg. Uh, and this, guys, is a very volatile topic. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to give you guys a few general rules in here, but there is no way that anyone in Planetside 2 can give you a good explanation on how to avoid every single double team in every single situation because Planetside is just too volatile an environment to fit into general rules. But here are a few things that you guys can do, right? If you are playing in any of the continents and you start to push into a faction's lattice, and you start to get too close to their territory, to their warp gate. So let's say we are playing, uh, we're on Nezamir right now. We are all on Nezamir. We are playing on the VS side. And all of you guys are going to go for Excavion. Excavion is on the NC side. You can all search for it right now with the search feature. Or you can find it on the south side of the map between NC and VS. So let's say we go for Excavion, we capture it, no problem, no resistance. Then we go for Emir Ruins with our platoon. We just keep zerging in, we capture Emir. Then we go to Frostfall, we capture Frostfall, we start to get some resistance when we hit Frostfall. By the time you guys hit East Wake uh, Harbridge, that is like the warp gate base for the NC, they will have a 96 plus waiting for you guys there. If they don't have it yet, a 96 plus will form at that base. They will be there. And uh, when you guys deploy away from that base, or after you capture it, or right after you guys get pushed off, that 96 plus is going to keep pushing on your territory. And they're not going to leave that lattice. Because the other factions lack leadership like VS has. They don't have as many public platoons. So they're much more reliant on just zerging a lattice because people just redeploy to whatever base, base is closest to the warp gate and they go fight there. That's just how the other factions work most of the times. In prime time, they're more organized, but any other time you can expect that type of reaction. So you're redeploying away from the NC front now and you're going to fight TR. But that Zerg is going to stay there, and it's going to keep pushing you guys, and it's going to keep pushing you guys. And if they don't have any other TR bases closest to them than the VS ones, they're just going to keep fighting you guys. So that's how it works. Every faction tends to fight whoever is closest to the warp gate. That's just the general rule of thumb. If someone is closest to the warp gate, that's the one that's going to get double teamed. So whenever you are doing an alert, you have to be, uh, first off, you need to see if there is a lot of resistance, if the enemy is organized or not, because you can get away with pushing up close to a territory, to, to an enemy warp gate, if the enemies just don't care about you at all and they're just farming in a biolab. 
Uh, but as a general rule of thumb, try your best to stay away from warp gating your enemy if you are playing for the win. Uh, you know, just fight for the key bases that you need. Try to go for the center of the map if you like, just to avoid getting as close to the warp gate as you possibly could. Uh, and that will avoid you, uh, that will avoid the creation of a bunch of zergs that are just going to keep hitting you until the end of the alert. And that's just basically the way you avoid both zerging and getting double teamed. Uh, when you guys start an alert, and all of you start paying attention to that if you haven't already, when we start an alert on VS and we are the, the winning faction at the start of an alert, most of the times, the winning faction will get double teamed right off the bat. Just because we will be the closest ones to the enemy territory, and that's just how it goes. They will see us up close, they will come fight us. So, it is beneficial almost all of the times for you to either let other factions start an alert, if you can. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys to literally give away territory in order for them to start an alert. If we are sitting close to the 100 strength on the Empire strength meter, and if they capture one more base, they will go over and start the alert. Just give up a base. Let them take it. Like, give that base. Let them start the alert. That way, you don't start in first place. You guys don't need to work that hard to start an alert yourself. Just take a platoon somewhere else. Let them start it. And then from there, you can keep fighting and trying to gain territory from the second place or third place even at that. I always prefer to start my alerts in last place because from there it's always winning, we're always gaining territory and we're never getting double teamed. So that's the best way for you to do it. Uh, now, the opposite side of the coin here, if you guys cannot avoid a double team at all and if it ends up happening, the best way for you to deal with a double team while it's already happening, is either to give up on the front, like if you are stuck in a fight that you absolutely cannot win, and the other front is also being hit, just give it up, uh, let that faction gobble up a few territories, they will get bored if it's just a bunch of ghost caps and they're putting a 96 plus in a base with no resistance, and they will redeploy to the other faction. So you can bore them to death, you can basically bore them into not double teaming you if you don't offer resistance. Just take a platoon somewhere else, go fight the other faction, hold on to one of the fronts uh, as much as you can, and then when you can't give anything else, if they hit one of your key bases, or if they hit a choke point, or if they hit a cutoff that you absolutely cannot give up, then you go back and start fighting them again. There's no point in fighting for territory that you can't hold if you're being double teamed, and uh, whenever those situations happen and you guys think that you cannot recover from it, it's just a lost situation, do not get frustrated with it. And I cannot stress this enough, guys. Planet Side 2 is a stressful game, especially for people who, is, uh, who are leading out there. You will get stressed out, you will get burned out. And that's just the single most important thing that we want to avoid in this game. So if you're getting double teamed, if you are losing, just tell your platoon. Make it clear to them, hey guys, we're not winning this one, guys. We're getting double teamed hard. Um, we're doing our best, but you know, we're, we're just not gonna get it. And then throw yourself into a fun fight. Go have some fun with your platoon. We're not gonna win all of the alerts, especially under a double teamed. And it's best if you try to make a good situation out of a bad one than to just rage and quit out of the game and just start yelling at your platoon. It's not their fault. It happens. Sometimes the other factions just want to fight you and it's best for them to do so and it's it's in their best interest to do so. Uh, so please try to stay calm in those situations. Just have a good time with your platoon. It is your responsibility as a platoon leader. You are an entertainer. You are there to give them a good time. You're there to have a good time yourself. So if you are under one of those stressful situations in a double team, just you know, give up in the, in the alert. Don't worry too much about it. And just go find a good fight for you guys to farm. Um, Let me heal you. 
I like to do harasser races when those things are happening. Sometimes I do saving private orby or just pull a bunch of galaxies and go fly over the center of the map or any other bullshit that you guys can think of. Just to have a good time. So keep that in mind. Can yeah, I ask go a ahead, question? Go so ahead. have you I mean I know that uh, you had different games and stuff like that, like harasser races, you know, etc. Um, have you ever taken your platoon to a bio lab fight? while being double teamed and knowing you're going to lose. No, normally we do, but... Do dozens of times. Okay. Dozens of times. Yeah. I if I see that my platoon is just having a terrible time, we're getting beaten all around, my platoon is losing morale, because morale is a big, uh, a big thing in Planetside 2. If I see that everyone is just having a terrible time because we're losing everywhere, I would just tell my platoon, hey guys, fuck this, you know, we're not winning, uh, we're being double teamed, there's nothing we can do, guys, let's just go have a good time, you guys can pick a fight if you want, uh, we can go to a bio lab and just have a good old time bio lab farm, you know, just throwing C4s with light assaults and, you know, just throwing ammunition at maxes and farming circs, it's completely fine in that situation. Uh, but what we don't want is you guys throwing away winnable alerts. That's why we say that you can't go to a bio lab at all times. Because it, it, it can, there is a fine line there, right? It's going to be up for you guys to judge if an alert is lost due to a double team or not. But we don't want you guys getting burnt out of an alert too early if you guys can still win, right? So. As a general rule of thumb, stay away from bio labs. But if you are, if you judge that there's just no way, there's nothing else to be done. Like there's 15 minutes left, and both the enemy factions are, you know, ramming up your warp gate. Just go farm whatever you want. We're we're not gonna yell at you guys for it, and just give your platoon a good time. In the end of the day, that's your job as a platoon leader, and that's what you should do. Any more questions? So, a quick, like, one minute recap, what would you do on SMA right now? Yeah, that's a very good example. So, SMA right now, let's take a look at it. Uh, so, territory control. So, this, this is a good example, guys. Uh, if, you, if you look at the map on SMU, what does the percentage uh, says hey, on the top? Can I interrupt for a second? Go ahead, go ahead. Could you repeat the question? He was too quiet and I didn't hear it. So the question was, what would I do on Azamir right now? Azamir has an alert. He wants me to make a case out of Azamir, the alert on Azamir right now. Okay. So everyone open up your maps on Azamir and tell me if any of you guys, so on the statistics on the top right side, make sure you have territory control on that. And tell me if anyone else has the percentages messed up uh, between the, the top bar and the bar on the top left side. Yep. Does, any, does anyone else have that bugged? Because I do. Right now my bar yes, says... Yeah, my bar says 19% territory control for us on the bar, but we actually have 26%. So that's a prime example right there of why you use that statistics instead of the bar itself. That, that thing bugs all the time. It's not reliable at all. So, uh, as a me right now, this is a very winnable alert. Right now, uh, NC is the biggest threat, as you guys can see. Uh, we are stuck in a fight on Pale Canyon against most of the TR population. And that fight on Pale Canyon that just ended right there was holding off the highest amount of TR population on the continent. So, if you guys give it five minutes from now, you will see all of that TR population from Pale Canyon moving on to fight the NC that are on many lake outposts up north in the map. So all of that TR, that 96 plus right there, is going to go fight the NC right now because NC are in first place and they are getting close to the TR warp gate. So what I would do in this situation right now is I would either go for Echo Valley that's being hit right now by VS, it just flipped, or I would go to Excavion, and then I would get on command chat, be very, like, be very clear on command chat, be, like, I, I wouldn't go over it, 
uh, for a long time in there because I want to be brief and I want to be objective. And I would say, hey, command, if we have any other available squads right now, we need to try to do the cutoff of Jordan Station. Do I have any, any other forces to hit Excavion for me? And if we manage to hit both Echo Valley and Excavion at this point and cut off those two territories, we're cutting off a huge chunk of NC territory. That's one of the worst problems of the Eastern Warp Gate on Azimir. And that's basically the win right there. We're going to see if that's what VS goes for. Uh, but right now what I would do is just completely take all of my forces away from the TR front. There's 25 minutes left and just go try to go cut off the NC. If we manage to capture both Echo Valley and Excavion, that would give us the win right there. So let's see if whoever is leading our forces on the VS side there does that. Can I make a comment real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, I know y'all, I know this is probably my biggest uh, weakness is the fact that I don't get in command as often as I should, but just because no one is answering Yeah, Cody, you cut off for me. Can you go again? Sorry. Is that a little bit better? Um, yep. One of my weaknesses is not getting in good. That being said, because the... Yeah, Cody, we can't hear you. Cody, you're, you're cutting you're it, mate. completely cutting off. I think some of your kids are downloading sh shit. Yeah. Get off that fax. Try go again. What I was trying to say is that I don't get in command as much as I should, but just because that you're in command and asking for help doesn't mean that you won't get a response, even if it's not verbal. So command is very helpful uh, at some times, so don't underestimate them. Exactly, yeah, and that is important. Even if you don't get an answer, it doesn't mean they didn't hurt you guys. They might not just respond, but they heard you. So every squad is going to hear you guys saying that. Uh, and that's why, guys, for Christ's sake, do not go mumbling in command chat. I don't want to hear anyone come complain to us that an SKL platoon leader was going over on command chat and just yelling at people. What you want to use command for is just get in there, ask for help, and leave. That's it. Use as, as few words as you can because people have their own communications. Be as brief and as objective as you guys can and then leave command chat. That's, what it, that's why it is there. And uh, hopefully if you guys have another SKL platoon playing at the same time, the other SKL platoon can coordinate with you guys. But keep it clear. As a command chat is not to be cluttered. You know, an SKL tries its best to not do it because other outfits... You know, they have a bad view of us. They think we clutter command chat. So if I hear about any of you guys talking bullshit on command chat, I will personally kick your ass off. You heard it here first. So, any more questions about that? Or about the SMR situation that's going on right now? So, guys, if you, if you take a look at the map now, uh, you, you can just see exactly what I said happened. The, the TR moved up there right now on Aurora Materials Lab, so the TR moved to the NC front. Uh, we made a move on both Echo Valley and Excavion. You can see that we are flipping those two bases. However, we still have forces on Matterson's Triumph and then Vari Ruins. So we have VS forces where they shouldn't be. Uh, that's a prime example right there of a situation where you can win an alert but you might not have enough numbers because either we don't have enough public platoons to herd those cats in the right direction or because we just have a bad leader telling them to go to a it's not going to take anyone anywhere in the map so that's why we need you guys. We need more decent leaders to not take people into Madersons in that situation and just go cut off NC on Echo Valley. <laughs> okay, so if no more questions about this, uh, I'm going to move 
to the next topic. Anyone? Any questions? I have one more question, sort of, just to sort of add on to what you're saying. So if you look at like Azimir, for instance. Yep. You're saying the way to prevent yourself from getting Zerg would be like, if you're entering Snowshoe area, just try to avoid that area because it's getting that close to the warp gate. Exactly. Yeah. You don't get it, them worried that they're going to get warp gated. Hitting Envari Barracks is already bad. Like, if you get as close as Envari Barracks, TR are already going to send a Zerg down your lane. And that's, you know, it's bad to give an example on our side right now because we're not doing it to anyone, but any NC just did that. If you look at many lake outposts right now, that's turning into a TR Zerg right as we speak. Uh, TR are sending all of their population to that base because it's the closest base to their warp gate. And they're just going to get a 96 plus TR on that base, many lake outposts. And that Zerg is going to keep eating up NC territory until like they, they see no more resistance and they go redeploy somewhere else. So we're going to see throughout this alert, if I'm right, that TR Zerg from many lake go to Apex Genetics, then probably to the rink and even further into NC territory if they don't get resistance from the NC side. And that's what you want to avoid right there. See, NC just did exactly what I told you guys not to do. So yeah, any more questions? Okay, so everyone, uh, we are already way over our time here, uh, but I will go over just our final topic real quick, guys, and then we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, with the official topics, I'm still going to be around to answer any questions and talk about specific cases if you guys want. But the final thing we're going to talk for tonight is how do you guys be... How do you guys behave during an alert in a winning and in a losing situation uh, and doing cutoffs as well? So, as a general rule of thumb, once again, you should always try to start an alert uh, being either second or third in territory control. So basically, let someone else start an alert. If you don't get that option and you have to start the alert yourself, you are obviously going to start the alert winning. You're going to have the higher percentage, so you should expect the double team to come. It will happen at some point in the alert, might not happen in the first 30 minutes, might just happen in the final 30, uh, but it will eventually come. Okay, so you start. have two approaches when you start an alert like that, when you are already winning and you are ahead and you are already expecting a double team. You can either sit back and keep your platoon in uh, population sync. That can either be a biolab or the center of the map. Just to not get too big of a, of a lead uh, to which point the, the enemy faction is just going to come and double team you. Or you can do the second one, which is the one that I prefer and I use it all the time. That is, you get as much of a lead as you can that way when you do eventually get double team you have like 60 percent of the continent controlled by your own faction and you are too far ahead that the other factions can't pull you back uh to second place so that's a very viable strategy in a very specific situation if you are the faction who started the alert uh you can keep your platoon on the offensive always in the offensive just keep attacking keep taking bases get as big of a lead as you can and when the double team eventually comes and both factions start fighting your faction you just fight for time and this is key guys you're gonna need to learn how to do this and it is like very much based on practice but fighting for time basically means you are not going to win the fights, you are not going to capture any base, you are not even going to be able to defend your own bases, but you want to squeeze as many seconds as humanly possible out of every single base that you are defending. What that means is if you are defending a fortress base, a three-point base, and your platoon is under popped, you will take your entire platoon to a single point, you're going to hold on to that single point, 
because just by holding on to a single point you are turning that six minute capture timer into a 14 minute minutes capture timer and that's buying you more time you guys understand what I mean you can also do back caps send one of your squads to be sneaky around them as and as they move out of a base get your platoon back on the point and do a back cap you guys will not capture the base you're just buying time you're just delaying your enemy so at that point it is a question of time instead of a question of territory. It's about squeezing in and just fighting for each point and each second. Because in the end of those alerts that you guys started and you guys get double teamed, it will be down to like five seconds. And those are the finest alerts you guys will ever encounter in Planet Side 2. Is when you guys are in the lead, you guys started the alert, you fought your way through it, you bought enough time to by the end win by like five seconds or one second and when those things when those things happen they are just like the best experience you guys can possibly have in planet side so that's a viable strategy on how to win uh when you're getting double teamed just try to gain as much territory as you can in the beginning uh however if you just want to sit around and stay like try to keep your advantage instead of pressing onto it that's also viable but you know it, it, it is dependent on the situation like whoever is leading the other faction is going to dictate uh, because if they just come fight for you on the first minutes of the alert you can already tell that you're not going to be able to keep yourself in the aggression for long so it's going to be up for your judgment as well So anyone, any more questions? Come on guys, no more questions? Any practical stuff? Uh, nope, just soaking it in. I'm sure as they get and go around more, they'll have more questions to ask you too. Because this won't be yep. your last training. Definitely, no, it so won't. someone did and, uh, ask in chat, how do they find squads with leadership? I, like I think that Fluffy is, Fluffy Mimi right here is talking in the outfit, not in platoon. So, Strong he's asking squad. some questions as well. Is he? Yeah. How do we find yeah. him? Oh, yeah, I see it. But is Fluffy here? Is he in the platoon? Yes. Yeah, yes. but he's got all his Fish, private Fluffy, is, Fluffy is brand new, I think. He, yeah. he just joined this week to the game. Okay. Okay, so Fluffy, if you are a very new player to the game, uh, let us know. We can try to help you out with, you know, some easier stuff. Because this is more leadership discussion. Uh, right after we finish here, I can go and talk to you about, like, how do you find our squads on Squad Finder. And if you are a new player, welcome to the game. <laughs> but yeah, we, we can definitely might... help you out, buddy. Hey, Orby, you want... If you're talking to him too, um, you might want to talk him into how to get private DMs because he's it has turned off. Yeah, Fluffy, I'll talk to you right as we finish here. We we are done with all like the the official topics that I wanted to go over. Uh, I want to let you all know, everyone, once again, uh, we will be doing these training sessions every Sunday around the same time. Each one of them is going to touch in a specific topic. Uh, this one that's supposed to be the last weekend of the month is the hardest one to do because strategy and map reading is just the hardest topic we have to tackle and it's not that practical. I can't go and show you guys, uh, you know, in a practical sense what to do. It's very situational. So it's much more about just general rules of thumb and just making a conversation out of cases. Uh, but the other training sessions uh, are going to touch on infantry maneuvers. So I'm going to teach you guys how to properly do a max crash, how to properly breach a point, how to properly hold a point. Uh, then the next weekend, how to properly do a gal drop, how to properly do an armor column, how to properly do an air ball to take out enemy bastions. Uh, and then on the next one, we're going to go over specific facilities. So how to properly take attack plant, how to properly attack a biolab, how to take quartz ridge, how to take hauling pass, how to hold a power building. 
So the next ones are going to be more practical and then the last one in the month is going to be this one in which we'll discuss just general rules of thumb in map strategy and maneuvering. So tonight's one wasn't as, you know, it's not ex as practical as it can be. So that's why I would like you guys to make more of a discussion out of it. Uh, this was the first one. Uh, we are also still evolving into the system so i will try to make it much better on the next one i will come with you know more prepared topics and try to improve on the things that i talked to you guys today so if any of you want to hit me on discord as well uh, and dm me a few things you guys would like to see on this specific training session for next month feel free to do so as well because we're going to use the feedback to just keep improving on the training sessions and uh, yeah, if you guys don't have any more questions, this is the end of it. That's, that's all I had to go over with you guys tonight. But I will be around if any of you want to discuss like anything more specific or you have any more questions. And um, Ferris, Orby, you can wrap I wanna, it up here if you want. Orby, I want to raise something to everybody who came to Galaxy and the combined... Uh...